So we're going to see some of the uh, features that Susanna is, is, is illustrated to us in the presentation, and we will create an image together. So the first thing, uh, we just have a quick look at the Mercury interface. So we have the display, the 3D viewer in the center with our molecule. Now I'm moving it, just clicking and uh, dragging. If I want to zoom in, I usually right click and move up or down, but alternatively, you can use these zoom plus and zoom minus options at the top here. You can move it with the arrows up, down, right and left, or with um, control and then click and drag. You can move your molecule and place it where you prefer. We have a series of menus at the top here. We will be using file menu um, and the display menu today and calculate as well. Another thing I want to show you is how to change the color of the background. So you can right click here and go to display options. And then from the display option, you're in background and you can select whether you want a single color or gradient. You click on the color and you have to pop up with all the colors and you can select the color you prefer. The gradient, each of the colors here instead represent a corner. So you will see that it is changing as I select. I will go back to the single color and we can move on to the other parts of the Mercury interface. So we have the structure navigator on the right where we can see all the structures that um, are loaded. And here we will insert the ref code of our structure. And again, we will use some of the display options here at the bottom. And if we close it, maybe we don't need it, we want to improve our visualization, then we can always restore it from display toolbars. And we close the display option so I can replace it from here. We're going to use this structure for the first part of this demo. And if we want to learn more about it, we can just go from the display option, more info. So yes, we are in a structure and we can see all the information about the identifier, the literature, the information about the unit cell and the critical cell. We have the compound name and if available, also synonyms. We can see the 2D diagram here as well. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is to see how we can change the style for this representation. And we saw before that there are different ways to do it. To do it. So the first thing we do is going to display styles. And we see the list of styles appearing here. So the first we try is the wireframe. So we see the change. Let's try again, display styles. Let's try stick. And we can see that this in this style drop-down menu is instead called cap sticks. So we'll try again from this. So we can go to the drop-down menu, style, space fill. So we can see again a different representation. And let's go back from style, back to ball and stick, the initial representation. We can change the settings for each of these going to display styles and we see that after the styles list we have the settings options so we're gonna edit the ball and stick settings and your might be different from mine if you are following along so you can see you can edit no metals and metals separately and you can see how it changes on the representation and you can also change the width of the bonds And you can do personalization for each of the um, representations. Another thing we can change is the colors of individual atoms or of the elements. 
So, um, for example, we might want to highlight uh, one of the nitrogen atoms, for example. So we can click on it and you can see that it is um, selected with a yellow mesh. Then we right click and we select colors. We can pick a color from the um, menu of colors here. So, for example, uh, let's do it in light blue. So we've changed the color of this individual atom. If we want to change the element color, we can right click anywhere and select again colors, element colors. So right click colors, element colors. And we brought up a periodic table where each element is represented with the colors that is used. So let's, for example, change the chlorine colors and we want oil chlorine to be orange instead. OK, so as you see, the color change on the periodic table and it changed on our structure. Um, just to mention, the unknown element is the color that is used for the um, suppressed atom that you saw before in the presentation. OK, so this is how you can change the colors of elements. You probably have noticed that the colors that I'm using for the background for the nitrogens, the sizes is different from the default. This is because I have uh, created a personalized style. So as you can see from Manage Style, there are a series of combination of styles, colors, background colors that are predefined. So for example, work, publication, presentation. Art, well, this is not the right, the right molecule to show this style, and we have 3D prints, so you should all see this style. Uh, I have a series of personalized styles where I chose the color, size, and background colors. To do so, you can double click on Style Manager, and you can see, so Manage Styles, you click on it, it brings up the Style Manager, where you can edit each of the styles, or you can copy it and then add it to create your own style. Uh, this exercise should also be on the handout as a bonus. Okay, so the next thing we're going to see is different uh, styles from here. So uh, we're going to change ref code. So from in the structure navigator, we use L O R B A W. Okay. So this is the structure that you also saw in the slide. So we want to see how we prepare the image that was on the slide. Uh, so for this structure, where well, we can learn a bit more about it again from more info, structure information. So we can see again the identifier, which we just inserted. We can see the formula and the compound name. And we can again see the 2D diagram to see which elements are represented. Uh, the style that we are going to use first is the ellipsoid style, which we will select from display this time. So we click display styles ellipsoid. So we clearly want to do some edits here. So we go to display styles ellipsoid settings. So the first thing I want to edit, we want to have the hydrogens drawn as fixed side fixed size sphere. So, OK, a bit better. And the other thing that I would like to add is to draw the principal ellipses. And we can also select the colors. So this is the representation like rugby balls that uh, we saw before showing the um, ADPs. This is the representation that we used to prepare the image before. We can also use this structure to see a different style, which is the polyhedral style, which, as you can see, shows, represents um, polyhedrals around the um, iron atoms. You can also, in this case, edit the settings. So we changed the style this time, sorry, I didn't um, mention. So we went to style polyhedral. For the settings, we'll go to display styles polyhedral settings. Okay, 
So here you can learn and date it, which are the central elements for the polyhedra. We have our list here. Again, you can do it for the ligand element and you can see the list here. And then you can decide about the op opacity of the uh, polyhedrals and whether or not you want to draw the edges. So this style is particularly interesting uh, for um, metal organic structures, of course. OK. We will change structure to study the packing. So next structure is H, X, A, C, A, N, 4, 8. So this molecule probably looks familiar, and if we want to Learn more again, more info, structure information. And here we have the compound name, but also the synonym, which you probably already guessed this molecule is paracetamol. And again, our diagram. So what we want to do now is to show the packing of this molecule in structure, in this structure. So uh, the first thing we can do is go into display option and tick packing. So this brought up the unit cell for this structure. So if we want to remove, we can do reset or just untick it. Uh, the next uh, thing I want to show you is how to edit the um, portions of the unit cell you're viewing from calculate. So calculate packing slicing. So from this menu that popped up, you can uh, first of all, decide which atoms are shown. So in this visualization we're doing here, we're visualizing atoms in molecules whose centroid fit. We can be stricter and just visualize atoms that fit. This is how it looks like. We can have atoms in molecules where any atom fit, and this is what we would see, or uh, we can have atoms in molecules where all atoms fit. And yeah, in this case, we wouldn't see anything. So you can pick the representation that makes the most sense for uh, your structure that you want to visualize and represent. So we'll go back to the default whose centered fits. We can decide to show, to visualize more or less, and we can do it from the packing portions. So we have pack along A, B, and C. We can add half a unit cell along each of the sides. Or we can add fractions of it by clicking the, where a bit small, but I hope you can see them, the um, little arrows here. And we can go in any direction that we want. We can um, also go back to the unit cell simply resetting the visualization. OK, so. The next thing we want to do is to find a nice representation of the unit cell to create a high resolution image. So you can rotate the structure to find the orientation that you prefer, but you can also use the um, options here, which means view down crystallography A axis, B or C axis. So if you click on it, it will align the representation. So we will choose along the A axis. OK, so let's say we like this representation. It's what we were looking for to put on our thesis or publication or presentation. So we can now create a high resolution image going from file, poverty image. So we have the pop up menu. The first thing that I usually do is check where the output directory is so I make sure that I know where I'm saving my images. Then you can uh, edit the resolution in terms of width and height. I'm keeping it quite, uh, quite small because I want to render in during the demo time. Uh, you can select the file format and then you can select the material properties. For this example, I will keep um, a metallic representation, which is like the structure that you saw in the slides. Then you can select the background. You can keep it 
as the one that you have in Mercury. You can select um, to have it white, black, transparent, or you can customize it. If you pick custom, you can select the color from here and pick the color that you want. A good advice is always to preview. So this is quite fast. And you can see it was a good call because my structure is not even fully in the frame. So I'm going to just move it a bit and I'll do another preview to see if it's better. OK, I can center it a bit more. So let's render it when we're happy with the representation. We'll do a render and you will see the rendering happening in a separate window. And then you can visualize the structure. I will bring up the image that we've just created together. And so here it is. And so this is what it would have looked like if we kept it as Mercury. So we can still see the shininess of the uh, metallic style and these are just other styles just to show you how the iridescent looks like this is metallic you can see the reflections this is matte shiny and this is as mercury this brings me to the end of the demo